Hello everyone, my name is Bottletop Hornet and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. <laughs> I've been doing a little work in preparation for the start of this episode and we got rid of the last of the Endermen. As you saw at the start, it may have taken a, a death, but in the end it's all done, they're all sorted, except for those few up there, but in this main room, they're out of the way. And I started to move these villages because for this episode, I want to expand my trading hall. So this trading hall has been really, really good for me, but I've noticed that as far as the, the bulk trades that I use for getting emeralds, having only six farmers is definitely not enough. And I'd also like the clerics for getting like redstone and stuff and all the, uh, oh, the experience bottles as well. So I'm going to shuffle around some of the guys that I have in here. These ones along the side will probably move up onto the top layer and I'll leave this top layer as it is with this little balcony, just keep it the same shape and everything so that I don't have to adjust the roof. And then we're going to open up that end wall there and expand it that direction. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time fiddling with these guys, uh, make sure that they're all in position. So they're out of the way. They're going to eventually probably go along this wall here once it's expanded. But I want to get these few up out of the way and get these ones out of this back wall so that we have room to expand. So let me do a little bit of work to get that ready. And then we'll pop into the episode properly, doing some expansions, decorating this, trying to make it match the existing uh, look that I made for this trading hall, while also making a bunch more functionality. And hopefully by the end of this episode, we'll have a really nice expanded trading hall set up with room for more villages if we need it. And I also want to make it so that we have access fairly quickly to the stuff that comes from our automatic sorting system so that I can trade the pumpkins and melons with the farmers and the rotten flesh that we get from our mob farm can probably go into trading with these clerics as well. So... Yeah, like I said, a little bit of work from me to start off with. I'm going to do that off camera and we'll cut back once I've got it all set up and we'll get to work. I'm looking forward to having a bit more of a creative episode than the last few. So see you in just a second. All right. After a little bit of organization and a quick fix on the, uh, the villager breeder over here, because I realized that if I wanted to start filling it, I needed villagers and there were none in there. So for some reason this wasn't running, I did a little bit of adjustment and removed some blocks and we now have baby villagers coming into the uh, the main chamber there and once they grow up they'll come up into here and I can direct them however I like on my rail system. But over here I have moved out the villagers that I don't want in their positions anymore. So we have our six main uh, farmer villagers over here. And I think what I'm going to do is some of them have the dual trades. So like this one has both melons and pumpkins, but there are a few like this one that don't have the pumpkins as well. So I'm going to do my best to, uh, how do I say this politely? Remove them from the situation. <laughs> I'm probably just going to get rid of them and, uh, and hopefully get a bunch of them and, or more to the point, hopefully have all of them have both trades so that I can be as efficient as possible with my use of the, uh, the items that I get from my different farms around the island but anyway we have those guys there and I moved up some of the people from over that side up into this area so we have these guys back in their positions we can still get the tools and whatnot from them and these guys here so with that all sorted it's now time to start thinking about what I want to do with this area now what I might do quickly is just pop over into the replay mod. It's just getting dark, so I'll quickly sleep so that we have a new day and we're continuing to make some of those baby villages. And if I pop just over here, this height is 61. So we, we the block that we're standing on is 61 uh, Y coordinate. And if I drop back over into this area here, you'll see that if I open up the F3 again, I'll try and edit it so you can see the targeted block there is 59. So that's 60. And that means that one up here is 61. So that height is the height of our floor in the other area. So leaving this top section is fine. If I pop over into the replay mod, I'll show you what I mean and give you an idea of the space that we have available to, uh, to expand in this direction. So over here in the replay mod, I'll just press F1 so that we don't have all that stuff in the way. You can see this is actually where I just was right as I was filming, talking about the block height of 61. And that line there matches up with a section of our roof in here. So there I am. 
I did not realize I got shot at while that was happening, but I'll hop probably just up onto this edge here in just a moment. Yeah, there we go. So we're, that's where I was just when I said that I would pop over into here and film. If I leave myself paused there, underneath this storage room, we have all of this space leading over towards our armory here. So with this space available underneath the storage room itself, I could potentially expand this all the way over here, probably another 20 or so blocks. I'm not quite sure just at a glance, but I have plenty of space available and there's also a lot of space underneath it. So I think what it might do is step it down a smidge. So we have one layer here, a second layer here, but the third layer down at this height, almost the height of that section there, the old uh, the old item stream that we had going across to our uh, temporary melon and pumpkin storage, we could lower it down and have underneath this main island a much larger villager trading hall than we have right now. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back in. We're going to do a bit of a time lapse of me working out uh, the size and shape of it and I'm going to dig it out, I'm going to set up a beacon I'm going to dig it out, make the space available, we'll collect some materials and we'll pop back in and do some decorating set up all these little modules like we have here and then it's going to be a case of uh, connecting hopefully over here we have these chests just sitting above uh, the, the armory hopefully what I can do is actually hijack this hopper line and rather than having them go out there or maybe while having them go out there i also have a section coming back down this way and we have some available storage in the trading hall itself so i think the the pumpkins the melons there's iron in this one here and then also some of the rotten flesh they can all be diverted down into the storage of the trading hall itself because those are things that we can use to convert into emeralds and trade with the rest of our villagers so with that being said let's pop back over into the main world and yeah, I think I will leave almost like a walkway here, something like like this. Oh, that's actually not bad. So the idea being we still have the availability of meeting these guys. Uh, maybe we move this one block out. So if I take these blocks and put them out like this, I don't know where that other piece went. But from there, we can have some little walkways that come down the side. We still have access to our existing villages, and there will still be room here. Although the stairs are a little bit in the way, I should be able to go and match up this. So from that point there, it would be, that's where the block goes. So we grab that like that. And if I just remove the flooring, Now we sort of get an idea of, we have little walkways going onto the side. <laughs> Obviously these guys aren't going to be moving back and forth, so we'll have a little bit more space in front of it. In fact, now that I think about it, I almost didn't need to move that at all. We can have it in the original position. I was just confused because I had this line here. So we would have, much like this, uh, a two wide walkway to get to these few on the sides. We could even extend that on if we wanted librarians on that floor, say, and we could go a few more that direction. But for now, the main purpose of this is to go down in this middle section here and sort of drop a main uh, staircase down into a lower section that'll be our, our bulk villages area. So it's where I probably, say I have six now, I would like to maybe get up to about 12, double it, if not more, so that if I want to do a trade, I can get rid of a lot in a short amount of time because they refresh their trades twice a day. The more I have, the more I can get done in a short period and then come back at a later time. So I'm gonna pop over into a quick time lapse. We're just gonna clean this area up. I might do the decorating and then we'll jump back in after I've done the time lapse and spend the rest of the episode organizing bits and pieces and trying to work out how best to decorate and get everything sorted until we have a final product. So enjoy the time lapse. I'll see if I can come up with something that looks interesting and follows the main sort of theme of this with the, the quartz bricks behind and, and the black stone and dark wood or dark oak, I should say. And if everything goes well, we should have a decent sized trading hall, probably two or three times the size of this one by the time I'm done. So enjoy that time lapse. As I said, I always repeat myself in these situations, but I'll be back with you in a second.
And welcome back in, folks. So we've got ourselves a bit of an area set up. Not complete yet, but I wanted to come back in now that I've got the main structure finished and just deal with a few little things before we finish it up. I actually just did a little bit investigating because I felt like now that we were down at this height, we might have been close. And I found that we actually pop out right about here in the... <laughs> repository so we might be able to connect the the two of them up quite easily and actually do that thing that I keep talking about where I want to make sure the whole base is connected in different ways so we might actually punch through here and make like a hallway of sorts I think and then we might be able to have like a little room in between the repository and the trading hall that is there to house something else. I don't know exactly what it could be yet, but there is the space there to, to use. So it's possible that we could do that down the line. So for starters, I've got this area prepared. Over here I have essentially where the chests will be connected up to the auto sorting system up above. And then along these walls, we can have our villages. Now with all that, I've made myself a bunch of uh, slabs and whatnot that I can use to create the floors. And of course, <laughs> because I was talking away, I forgot that I wanted to make those ones a stair. But I'll do much the same that I have up in all the other areas where I make it half slabs and that way we don't have any spawning problems or at least minimal spawning problems. Because I do want to make sure that the uh, the villagers down here are fairly safe. Even though the way that I have them set up in there, they're kind of untouchable, as far as I can tell, from mobs. So while I do have this flooring and whatnot to finish up, there is something else that I realized while I was actually digging this out and just thinking to myself. Is that I obviously want to go through and do the zombification of all of them so that we get decent prices on our trades. But the thing is, I think I'm nearly out of the uh, weakness potions. So what I might have to do is go and make a bunch, uh, do some do some gathering. Okay, we have the weakness potions. I think it might have been the, uh, the golden apples, actually. Let me just double check that. If I have golden apples, they're going to either be in the gold box over here, which they're not, or the apples box here which we don't have any. Okay, so what we might do is grab this gold and make up a decent amount, like so. Definitely gonna probably use up all of that gold. <laughs> it's amazing how expensive these things can end up being, but we may as well make as much as we can. There we go, 46 should definitely do me for now. <laughs> I've got a little hole here because I kept investigating and looking at this area back here to see uh, how it was all gonna fit underneath and also what I might end up doing in the future out here, there's plenty of space. We'll talk about that at the end of the episode, some of the plans that I have coming up. But for now, we should be able to see how many uh, villages we can get with this. That hopefully we can get three for each. And oh, that was a mistake. Hopefully we can get three for each one of the uh, potions in here. So that's 15 total. And that's a good start, but I am gonna have to do more. It'll probably just end up being... Wait, excuse me? Oh, that's right. As I... <laughs> I was so confused for a second. As I was uh, digging out and, and doing stuff under here, I accidentally dropped this guy and he fell through the floor. So we're missing our, one of our uh, clerics over here. Oh, well. we'll see whether we can wrangle him back up there later, but there's no guarantees. What was I doing? <laughs> right. So we have some golden apples here. We've got some... Uh, potions of weakness. So it's just a matter of ferrying some of these villages that we've got up there down into this area. Hopefully they don't... Uh, actually, I might get rid of you so that I can move this guy and make sure that they don't hit him as they go flying past. He should be far enough out of the way. So I need to make up a bunch more carts because these guys are using all the ones that I currently have. Set up their little stations down here and start to ferry them down one by one. So I'm going to start organizing that. I'm going to get it to the point where... I'm, I'm ready to put them in and I have a new rail set up. Uh, make sure everything's prepared and whatnot. And I'll bring you back in once once I have them a little further along. Maybe started to get some into the, into the place down below. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is just try and get all of them down in here. Get their trades sorted a little bit. And then... We can finish up the episode by bringing these uh, these hopper lines down and filling up these chests properly so that I have access to them uh, from down in the trading hall. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. It's going to be a bit more efficient. Otherwise, I'm just going to be showing you stuff that I've probably shown before of just healing and and transporting villages. So with that, give me a minute. It's It'll take a while for me, but it'll just be a cut for you. And we'll pop back in and do some work transferring the items down here. So see you in a second. Okay, well, 
<laughs> it's taken me a little while. I've uh, done a fair bit of work. I better make sure I don't look at this Enderman. few hours to get these uh, guys all sorted and get their trades correct. So we didn't have to uh, remove too many of them. There was only a couple who didn't get the right trades. But now, as we go down here, you can see I changed it up a little bit. So I realized that just having these two sides wasn't quite enough. I've moved all of our clerics down here, and now we have a full set of clerics that we can trade and uh, get up to master so that they can be uh, giving us those experience bottles. So now we have a little bit of spare space Oh, no, we don't, actually. Apparently, I also moved some of these uh, librarians up there as well. Good. So we've got a spare slots here that uh, we could put whatever we like in, maybe some more librarians, so that most of our librarians are sort of up in this top section. And then down here, we have the main bulk trading hall. So we have uh, one, two, three, 12 total of the farmers, and every single one of them has the pumpkin and melon trade so every single one is going to get us the maximum amount of trades per day and the maximum amount of em emeralds which is why i actually have this uh, inventory full here i'm going to see how many emeralds i get for one day of trading not like that <laughs> so if i just go through and trade with every single one of them it's going to take a bit of time so give me a second we'll see how many emeralds we get from going through and getting rid of all of these items Okay, so that means that with one full set of trading for a day, so they're two trades that they get per day, and uh, however many melons it was for each one and pumpkins for each one, we use up four and a half stacks of each type, and we get a total of exactly not Actually, wow, okay. So just from our farmers, every single day, we can trade enough melon and pumpkins to get one entire stack of emerald blocks. Great. That's fantastic. That's more than more than enough for what I was hoping. That's a good amount. We went up a decent amount of levels as well, so I can use that for healing. Uh, not healing me, healing the tools, like my mending tools. We do need to fix this bow very soon. It has uh, four durability, so we might do that at the end of this episode as well. But now, with these guys here trading the rotten flesh and all of these guys with the uh the melons and pumpkins it's time to really dig down and see if we can get some chests set up here which one two three four five six seven see we could even technically do i have some chests available uh i think i have some somewhere i can probably grab them out of my ender chest for now and just replace them later so we'll chuck an ender chest here That'll do. So we have this top walkway here that can go around to the end as well. And it all sort of loops together in a way that it's fairly easy to get to any stage that we want to. And what I think I can do is pretty much just have the chests here marked for their items and uh, have some lines come down through. So we're going to have to do a little bit of investigating, a little bit of uh, searching for the items carefully because the last thing I want to do is accidentally <laughs> pop through and, and destroy some of the redstone. So I might go up this direction and see when we come out. There we go. All right, so we are right on the edge of it. That's good. So if I pop down here, like so, okay. So the line of hoppers is right on that back edge. If I perhaps make a group of sorters down here so that I can do one hopper line coming down and then as it goes back through it resorts the items. Hmm. Let's open up this space a little bit and see what room we can create, what room we have underneath everything. Hopefully we don't hit the uh because if that's there just around here somewhere we're gonna obviously run into the armory, but we might have just enough room to to make what we need. So maybe one more back here. Like so. That seems like plenty of room. If we maybe want to have them run into the back and keep the front uh, view quite clean. Yeah. Okay. So what I need to do is probably go back over. See this? This is where having my ender chest set up like it is, is super helpful because I can do this. There we go. Just grab a bunch of that. I might want to use that, 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 that and some redstone maybe keep a few extra chests on me and essentially i believe i have everything that i need to create this system just like that right out of my ender chest what i should also do is get into the habit of <laughs> if i can there we go putting that back in there so that it's tucked away and the ender chest is 
fully fixed up every single time. And now what we're going to do is see whether we can organize a way to get the items to come down through. So my best bet, I think, is to come in here like so. Just make a little bit of room. Okay, so there we are directly on top. <laughs> wow, we're, we're definitely just scraping through as far as this goes. So make a little bit of room there. Just inside there is our armory. And then if I just hijack this line that comes down, which is already filtered, and put a hopper in that direction, that means that I believe hoppers will go down first before they go across, which means that as this fills up, it's going to fill up this line down to our, uh, our storage down below. If that then backfills all the way up here, once this hopper is full, it's going to continue to fill up this storage system up top so that we have sort of like an overflow uh, protection against that. So the same thing uh, with this one, which is our, our line for the melons. I can remove both of those blocks. It might be best for me to try and get individual lines down. So I believe, yep, that one. I'll leave the main... Uh, Yes, the main Rotten Flesh over here. And I'll take from our Rotten Flesh Overflow. I think that's the best way to go about it. It just means that this might be permanently filled up with Rotten Flesh, but that's okay. So this is our Rotten Flesh. Again, we come in here, place a block, and then we start to get Rotten Flesh pouring into there. Perfect. So the last one that I want, if I have melons, pumpkins, and Rotten Flesh, is possibly some iron which is this one here. I've just recently turned it all into uh, blocks, but I really do need to go finish that. I'm going to, in between this episode and next, I'm definitely going to finish that iron farm, so I'll show it off uh, by the next episode. Don't worry about that. Okay, so, hmm. No, I'll leave the iron for now. We'll have a spare chest down there for something in the future. So, just going to make a little bit more room. <laughs> We're definitely cutting it very close, really squeezing everything just in together. Make sure this is lit up. And now, now we start the process of trying to get our hoppers across. Right, so that's our, uh, right there is where our armor is. We're really cutting just across the top of it. Can I remove this block? No, that's definitely, so we want to make sure that that's there still. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, see what I can do to uh, organize all of this and make it flow down into there. And then we'll hook it up and see whether the items start going into the correct chests. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> I've organized it a bit, and now we have rotten flesh, pumpkins, and the melon pieces coming down into this chest here, as well as, oh, <laughs> as, well as behind these trapdoors, we have access to extra if we use up all of them somehow, if we use up an entire double chest in a trading session. And I've made a little access point back here into this room where... I know it's not the best way to do it. I could probably do it with some water streams a lot more efficiently. But for now, this is transferring the items through these hopper lines down into the uh, into these chests here, which drop it down into the main ones. So they drop from just up above, if I can get through there. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Squeeze through. It's all just a bit hodgepodge at the moment, all a bit thrown together. But I wanted to get the functionality there. So if I cover up these like so, and then go down into here, we can see that this line from the, the rotten flesh comes across and drops down there. And then our two from the melon and pumpkins go down straight down into the, uh, the main area. So for now, this is all functional. We have room for potentially iron. If we get to the point where the iron farm is overproducing and we wanted to say, set up a bunch of uh, either armorers or, or the weaponsmiths across the side here just to trade that iron. But I feel like we're going to get more than enough uh, emeralds from these guys and these guys to the point where I'll probably want some more functional villages across this side more than anything. I think I might maybe just try and decorate that end wall a bit. Ooh, we should make... I don't think we've done that in this series yet. We should make a painting. It's night time, so these guys have actually converted themselves back or that guy might have done it. That's all right. When we end up converting them again, they're going to have even cheaper prices. But we should see if we can get one of those super large paintings just to uh, have up in that tr trading hall. So give me a second. I'll have to see whether I can remember. I think it's just some pieces of wool surrounded by sticks. Oof, getting a little bit laggy here. Possibly due to all the hoppers that I have going. So we will have to make sure 
that uh, over time, if it does end up being quite laggy, we will streamline things and fix things up. But there it is, a painting. Piece of wool surrounded by sticks. Put that away for now, and that can go away for now. And we'll see whether we can get a nice big one. One of the really, really big ones. Oh, yeah. We did. Just not where I had hoped. <laughs> okay, so do I have to place it? Okay. That'll work. Hmm. Looks a little bit... Doesn't, does it really fit this area? Do I want these guys to have a skeleton? Let's see if there's another type. That's okay. I just don't know whether there's any other super large ones other than this skeleton one or the Mario one. It appears there's not. I, I'll quickly Google it just in case. But if those are the only... Ooh. Okay, so that's different shape. Doesn't quite fit there. So I would have liked something like that. But if those are the only ones that work there, I think we're going to have to pick the Mario. There we go. All right. So the Mario will do for now. That <laughs> adds a little bit of color and changes things up a little bit. And I think we're pretty good. I will just, from here on out, we're just going to have some things that we can add on the sides. Some walkways or some, uh, what would you call them? Hallways, I suppose, that lead to different areas down the line. And I think opening this one up like this, I may as well just quickly do it while I'm here. Straight through our old uh, our old item f item line that was our old p melon and pumpkins. And I think once we get out to this point, I would like to make a room in between these two spots. Oop, I nearly fell. So yeah, this is where we would drop down to our our mining area down below, and then I could have a large open room in here that was maybe. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'll have to have a think on it. The first thing that popped into my head was uh, getting all like the raw ores like this from down in the mining and turning this into a slightly bigger room and just stacking them like we have uh, ore deposits that we've uh, collected and brought up for processing into this area here. Also works in a way to do with the repository as this is like study of the natural elements. Yeah, I'd like to know what you think, if you uh, think that's a good idea or not. And we could extend it out a decent, decent way because we do have a lot of room down here behind this and in between the repository and the, the new trading hall. So we could make it a decent sized room and, and just see what it looks like, I suppose. Either way, we do have this set up now. I'm really happy that I've got a bunch more of the uh, the farmer traders to go. That's definitely starting to fill up. Obviously now it's all just coming through here automatically first. And we have the top sorting section as the original sorter, but also as a backup for this storage. So this is the main end of the storage line, which we can have all our stuff in here. Obviously you can see there, melons and pumpkins are flowing through. And for now, I'm just going to leave this side empty. I don't exactly know what I will want, and it will be down the line, maybe, that I would say want uh, more of the stonemasons to get different types of, of stones, like the polished andesite and all those, rather than having to collect it and use the resources that I have. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Needs a little more decoration, but when you're standing here, it looks all right. So before we finish this episode, what I would like to do is just make myself a new bow, and then I can leave you. Uh, we can move on to the next episode. I'm going to finish the uh, iron farm in between. I'm just going to make one of these into a fully fledged bow like this. But yeah, finish the iron farm in between. And then I think what I'd like to do is actually... Let, oh, I'm so distracting myself. Let me make the bow. <laughs> okay, so let's see what our luck is. Terrible. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell you, but if I go... To my statistics, I lost all of my achievements and all of my statistics again. So, I don't know what it is. I am so thankful that I didn't lose the world. I have plenty of backups of it, but <sighs> there's something about this that just does not agree with me. But at least we have the world. I can continue to make stuff for you guys. I'm not too stressed, <laughs> but oh, it was a scary one. We move on. We don't worry about the losses as long as we can continue. So I'm just going to see if I can get infinity on this bow. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing. Why don't I just combine... <laughs> Why don't I just combine my old bow and just reset it so that it has more health again? There we go. Fixed bow. If <laughs> you guys have an idea for a name for the bow, 
um, leave it in the comments. We'll see what we can come up with. Now that I've got nanoscale precision and I have the Galaxy Flow sword, aerial ambience on the wings, I'd like a cool name for the bow as well. Oh, it's so nice to have that refreshed. Okay, so plans for next episode. I have realized that with the Isle of Ender project and the, tre uh, the terraforming that I have to do, I'm starting to collect up a massive supply of stone, but I'm also going to need a lot of grass or dirt and I'm going to need a lot of sand. This barrel system works okay if I have these shulker boxes, but in reality, I would like some more reliable bulk storage. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is open up this area here. Do I have any chests on me? So sort of fan those chests out. So instead of being there, they are like so. Oops, that's not right. And on this side as well. <laughs> Again, that's not right. And so when those are transferred across, we have a walkway going through here. And I want to create a bunch of storage silos. Now, I don't know whether you guys have seen storage silos before, but it's a way of setting up redstone so that you can fill up a large supply of one certain type of uh, material. And you also have an indicator of how full it is. So I'd like to do, I've never tried it before, so I'd like to go and have a look at tutorial, see if I can work out how to make it and use this area a little bit more efficiently or use this area at all, I suppose is more the point. So we're going to punch through here, create a new room here, which is our bulk storage. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Now I can't get back in there. <laughs> Let's, uh, where is a way that I can get in through? Um, 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 like this. Haha. <laughs> through the roof. So yeah, that's going to be next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, expansion of the, the Villager Trading Hall that we did. And I'm going to try and do a couple more episodes that are just additions to the base before I get too stuck into trying to terraform. I am starting to feel a bit better. We've uh, adjusted some medication and got things working a little bit nicer for me. So I'm starting to get some energy back. So while I wait to see if that improves, I'm going to do some extra work on the base like this, this room here. So with that being said, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, especially Tom, my level three supporter. I really do appreciate it. It makes it... Uh, a lot easier to work towards these goals and put in the effort knowing that you guys are supporting me and I can save up that money and, and use it towards upgrading my PC, hopefully avoiding some of these crashes because a lot of my hardware is quite old, even though the graphics card is pretty decent. I would like to upgrade some things to make editing and uh, producing these videos a lot easier. So thank you so much to my Patreons for, for that support. It's definitely going to go towards helping improve this for everyone. So if you would like to support me and uh, are able to do so, I don't want anyone to uh, do it if it's not something that is easy for them to do. I know times are hard for everyone, but if you would like that, my Patreon is linked in the description. Other than that, just thank you for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the series still. I'm going to be trying to become more regular again with my schedule. I think what I would like to do is try and put out the Let's Play episodes on a Tuesday or Wednesday in the week, and then Friday becomes my Freestyle Fridays, if it <laughs> if it stays that way. We'll see. I'll try and stick to a schedule that uh, that works for you guys and works for me for putting out the videos and see whether we can, we can get that running smoothly again. So until the next episode, which will be Freestyle Fridays on this coming Friday, I hope you take care of yourselves until the next episode, and I'll see you then, guys. Bye-bye. Whoop!